We fail to understand the importance of design in the products, services, and physical spaces in healthcare. I believe that good design is good for healthcare, and I'm going to share with you how thinking like a designer helped me to be creative at my job and saved me from burning out as a doctor. I was the first in my family to become a doctor. My mom and dad are immigrants from South Korea. They never completed college. We were poor growing up. We were not anything like those wealthy families in that awesome movie, Crazy Rich Asians. <laughs> like many immigrants who moved here, or who are at least trying to move here, they saw America as a land of opportunities, and their dream was for me to become a doctor. But there was just one problem. I didn't enjoy my science classes, and math, I hated. It was my worst subject. I really suck at math, and yes, I am an Asian male, but no, <laughs> we are all not good at calculus. I was always drawn to the arts and humanities, much to my parents' horror. I chose a major in classical studies in college. Translating the ancient poets from Greek and Latin, that captured my imagination. Organic chemistry didn't. After surviving medical training, in spite of my math incompetence, I worked, and I still do, in an emergency room. And in the hospital, we use a secret language. A phrase that you, heal, you, you will hear often in the emergency room is moving the meat. It's kind of terrible, isn't it? It refers to being efficient to diagnose and discharge patients as quickly as possible. And I am guilty of using this derogatory slang when trying to clear out a waiting room overflowing with patients when there are six hour waits. Working in the meat grinder that is the ER is hard and I have suffered burnout. My symptoms are emotional, spiritual, physical exhaustion, feeling dehumanized, lacking empathy. Burnout among physicians, it's an epidemic in America. Everyone suffers with burnout, especially our patients, because burned out doctors will deliver burned out care. How do we address this problem of burnout? I've heard a lot of strategies, everything from practicing yoga to mindfulness classes, but the problem's complex. There are no easy solutions. There's not a magic antidote. Doctors can't yoga themselves out of burnout and into wellness. And in the case of my own burnout, my treatment plan consisted of tapping into creativity. That creative part of my soul that was trapped during years of rote memorization in medical school and the dehumanizing culture of residency training. Experts agree that doctors should have an outlet, a creative outlet, and to take up an activity like painting, or I've even heard swing dancing, but trust me, you don't want to see me dance. It's not pretty. I believe that creativity is the most underappreciated skill set in the healthcare workforce. And why do doctors need to search for creativity outside of medicine? Can't we bring creativity into the delivery of the healthcare system? And I believe that creativity, that making people healthier is actually a creative pursuit. So how can we do this? We can do this by embracing design. Design plays an important role in, in our everyday lives. We appreciate good design from the, um, your most comfortable shoes, from the feeling of those, to the experience of going into your favorite cafe. And we complain when products and services are designed poorly. When the iPhone 4 came out, there was a big controversy. It was called Intenigate. You, if you held it in your left hand, it started dropping calls. And people went berserk about that. They said, you know, how could Apple design a phone with a flawed antenna? But why don't we talk about design in healthcare? Is it because our experience of healthcare is so bad and that good design in healthcare is so rare? Think about your last healthcare experience as a patient. Maybe you were perched on a high examination table talking to your doctor who barely made eye contact because he's typing away at his computer. 
That happened to me on my last visit. Or maybe you had to put on one of those embarrassing patient gowns with that opening in the back that totally exposes your butt. Or you had to take an entire afternoon off of work for a 1 p.m. doctor's appointment because you knew that doctor was not going to show up at 1 p.m. And who here has had the experience of a doctor's office or hospital asking you to fax in a medical form? It's 2018. Who even owns a fax machine? <laughs> The journalist Sarah Cliff calls the fax machine the cockroach of American medicine. <laughs> our healthcare system obviously needs to be redesigned. The same is true for our medical schools. Medical education hasn't been redesigned since 1910. They are designed to fail because they were designed to produce doctors for the 20th century. Think about your future doctors. They are sitting in a lecture hall like this. They are college freshmen. They are pre-med. They were literally born in the year 2000. They know nothing of the 1900s. That kind of makes you feel old, doesn't it? <laughs> they will be the ones putting us on chemotherapy, removing our infected gallbladders, giving us blood pressure medication. To change the future of healthcare, we need to redesign how these doctors are going to be trained. I started the first program in a medical school that formally teaches design thinking. It's one of the largest and oldest medical schools in the country. So what exactly is design thinking? My favorite definition comes from my colleague, the author and designer, Ellen Lupton. She says design thinking is a set of creative tools that generates ideas and solutions for, that meet human needs. And the practice of design thinking uses physical prototypes, sketches, and storytelling to help teams build empathy and actively engage with the situation. Ellen says that design thinking is an open mindset that invites people to rewrite the rules of business as usual. And design thinking isn't just for designers. Anyone can take part. Teaching design thinking to medical students and doctors and applying it to healthcare helped me to develop more empathy for patients and led me to reimagine my role as a physician. And I want to share with you three principles of health design thinking. Prototyping, storytelling, and co-creation. Prototyping is the ability to communicate the ideas in your head in a physical form. When a team was looking to improve the experience of central venous catheter insertion, they use everyday objects like Legos, Play-Doh, and cardboard to prototype a redesigned medical package for that catheter to make it easier for a doctor to find what she's looking for during this procedure. And when we took on the challenge of improving sepsis care, we sketched and mocked up a prototype of an interactive checklist that might help doctors and nurses remember to perform the critical actions in sepsis management. Simple prototypes like this can lead to real solutions. And I believe that prototyping is a much better tool than those one hour long meetings that we have at conference room tables for inspiring ideas. Storytelling is another method that we use. And part of our storytelling technique is what we call storyboarding. A storyboard explains an action with pictures. Storyboarding was extremely helpful to my medical students when they were designing a device to minimize sleep disruptions in hospitals. Storyboarding allowed them to validate their ideas even before they built a prototype. And this team went on to file for a device patent, form a company, and do a clinical study that showed that patients were able to sleep 20 more minutes per night while in the hospital. Co-creation, it's fundamental to design thinking. It means designing for and with the end user. Too often, we design solutions without the input of end users. If your team, for example, is trying to reduce hospital readmissions, try inviting end users, patients with congestive heart failure, and their caregivers. These end users can give fresh insight into problems. Our team is currently working to 
on a health solution for the community of Kensington, Philadelphia. Kensington is at the center of the opioid crisis. The New York Times just came out, came out with an article on Sunday about Kensington, and they called it the Walmart of heroin. It is the largest open air drug trafficking for heroin on the East Coast. We went into that neighborhood and talked with residents and nonprofit organizations to understand their wants, needs, and desires. They told us that they were tired of being stigmatized by the heroin epidemic. They wanted to lead healthy lives. Not all of them wanted to get high. Together, we are launching a program where, where we are using food as a change agent. We hope to deliver low-cost, made-from-scratch meals that compete against fast food. We want to design healthy addictions. Anyone here can design for health. Whether you are a healthcare executive, a nurse, a doctor, a patient, and a caregiver, start by choosing a project that you feel passionate about. It might be redesigning your crummy waiting room or improving communication within your teams, or maybe it might be helping your mom who's aging to remember to take her medications on a daily basis. Co-create with end users, prototype a solution rapidly, I believe that we have the ability to use our imagination to make healthcare beautiful. And together, we can redesign its future. Thank you.